Why, hello there, YouTube. I didn't see you there. Yes, I'm doing that bit. You might notice I'm a little more animated than usual. That's because this is an animatic. Hopefully, we'll see what production is like. I'd also like to personally... I, I say that, but I'm literally the only person who works on these videos in this channel. Welcome, everyone, to Divine December. Deo gracias. Every video this December will be about fantasy religion stuff, and I'm going to try and spit out as much content as I can for the month. Right, onto the video. So, the big question of the day. What exactly is the difference between paladins, clerics, and priests? That's a good question, the old PCP, paladin, cleric, and priest conundrum. And from the perspective of gameplay, this is an extremely easy question for me to answer. Paladins are more martial than spellcaster. They get the least amount of spell slots for miracles, learn the fewest miracles in the first place, but in exchange they have all the armor and weapon proficiencies their specific god is ever going to ordain them. Paladins also get access to a lot more set-them-and-forget-them abilities, like auras, and weapon or armor buffs and augments. If you want to be a warrior, fighter, or barbarian, who's basically sponsored by God, you want to be a paladin. Clerics, meanwhile, are the jack-of-all-trades and masters of none. They're equal parts martial and spellcaster. They're allotted a decent amount of spell slots, and they have access to a wider range of miracles than the paladin, but they're spread out. You can honestly make an entire party out of nothing but clerics, and you'd be fine. They're an extremely pliable and adaptable class. Dark Souls. Dark Souls has the most accurate depiction of a cleric I've ever seen in a video game. Like, when you make an unoptimized faith build, where you have just enough points in faith, strength, and dex, so you can cast lightning spear, healing, and homeward, while still giving you access to, like, a decent shield and mace? That's a cleric. If you want to play that, you want to play a cleric. Priests are not universal to every system, so your mileage will vary, uh, depending on how useful this input is. I use them, though. Priests are exclusively spellcasters. They don't get access to any particular armor proficiency, and weapon preferences are also pretty limited to things like staves, daggers, slings, and small caliber firearms. But then of course the big advantage is having the most spell slots, the ability to recover miracle usage with short rests, full access to the entire expanded list of miracles your god ever intends on lending you, as well as the ability to ritual cast, unless you are playing D&D, in which case clerics get that too. D&D clerics just get to do whatever they want. Listen you. If you want a ritual cast, if you want access to all your spells and spell slots, you're gonna get rid of that goddamn shield and put on a robe. Honestly, if you wanted to play a warlock or a wizard, but wanted better access to healing and support spells, and like a clear segue into what or how you should be roleplaying with a better public image, a priest is a pretty good option. Speaking of segueing, roleplay. Everybody talks about roleplay, but what about roleplay? There's like 10 million ways I could possibly answer this, and it's going to be different for every setting, system, god, pantheon, etc. But generally speaking, this is how I roll with it. Paladin is an enforcer, executioner, crusader. They physically meet out their god's will, whatever that so happens to be, at the end of a sword. Some people are going to tell you that the defining trait of a paladin is the oath they take with their god, but all divine classes have an oath with their god. If you eat meat on a Friday, covet thy neighbor's mule, or otherwise slip an alignment disc, paladin, cleric, or priest, you'll all lose your casting levels all the same. Another common misconception is thinking all paladins have to be these lawful good medieval England chivalrous light emitting heavily armored knights. Paladins can come in any alignment their god comes in and practice any kind of martial prowess or oath. A god of the hunt can have paladins functionally identical to rangers, while a primitivist anti-magic god can produce thong-wearing Conan barbarians, and a god of music and art can have militarized bards. Clerics! Honestly, my impression of clerics is the divine version of a circuit rider, a traveling holy person who's on call and mets out odd divine jobs. God called them to service, but never specified exactly what they needed them for. Clerics have the least responsibility to their god's respective church, 
but they also have the least amount of responsibility. They're... They're simply not tied down to the clergy. So as a result, clerics can't really pull rank, while paladins and priests can literally walk into a church and assume direct control, provided there's no one in there with a higher level than themselves. Priests are on the very opposite of this spectrum and can be confidently defined as literate. A priest is responsible for all the esoteric religious knowledge attached to a religion, rituals, customs, uh, cosmology, and of course miracles. Priests get the distinct pleasure of getting access to all the cool powers, but they also have to do all the weird rituals. Sacrificing animals, cutting off foreskins, healing diseased prostitutes, or themselves being prostitutes minus the diseases. This is what priests do during a long rest or whenever they're in town. Seriously, look up temple prostitution. It's, it's totally a thing. While a paladin may be the sword of God, a priest is the voice of God. While a cleric might go where the church is, a priest is the church wherever they go. Alright, there you go. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Oh, and don't forget to stick around, because I'll be doing more all December. Divine December. As much as I can poop out. <laughs>